The Morris Canal stretched across northern New Jersey, from Phillipsburg in the west to Newark and Jersey City in the east. It was built almost 200 years ago and for many years was an important part of New Jersey's transportation system. A canal is a long, man-made stretch of water. Canals have been used for hundreds of years to move people and goods and are still used today. In the old days, mules walked on a towpath near the canal. The mules pulled the boats in the canal waters. A mule driver steered the mules along the towpath. The captain steered the boat in the canal. On the Morris Canal, mule drivers were often children. You might think of a canal as a water highway. The Morris Canal stretches 102 miles from beginning to end. In the early 1800s, there were no highways or airplanes. A trip across New Jersey was very difficult in those days and very expensive. As a result, basic daily needs like food or coal or lumber was only available from the local area or was very costly. A trip on the Morris Canal would take about five days. A Morris Canal boat could carry 70 tons of cargo with just two mules. A boat going from Phillipsburg to Jersey City on the Morris Canal first would climb up 700 feet in the west towards Lake Apacom, and then go down 900 feet in the east from Lake Apacom to Jersey City. That large change in elevation is still a world's record today for a canal. The Morris Canal is very close by. Let's zoom in and take a look. Lock 7 West was also known as Breadlock. The store at the end of the lock sold goods to the boatmen, including homemade bread and pies. Notice how the line of trees follows the old canal path. On the edge of the park, you can see the old canal bed yourself. Let's look at the westernmost section of the canal in Phillipsburg. Once on the New Jersey side of the river, a boat would go through the entry arch and climb up the first canal plain. This plain was called Plain 11 West since it was the 11th plain in the western part of the canal. Today the plain is gone, but you can still see the incline to the river and the archway that marks the beginning of the canal. Let's follow the canal from Phillipsburg to Breadlock Park. Most often a canal is built on flat, level ground like in these pictures. But sometimes the ground is uneven and the canal has to go up and down a hill. On the west side of the park is Lock 7 West. This is a picture of Lock 7 West. This lock could raise or lower a canal boat 9 feet. Let's take a look at this lock and find out how locks work. A canal uses a special gate called a lock to go up and down a hill. The boat goes into the open gate in the lock 
and the gate is closed behind it. Then water is poured into the lock and the boat rises with the water. The other gate is opened and the boat continues on its way. These are pictures of some locks on the Morris Canal. Here, the mule leader waits for the boat to go in the lock and rise to the next level. This machinery controls the heavy lock gates. When the gates are open, the water pours in. Water raises the boat in the lock while everyone patiently waits. Let's take a close look at Lock 7 West, also known as Breadlock. Here is how it looks today, from the same spot. The stone foundation for the lock tender's house remain. Just to the left side of the lock itself. Here you can see the upper gates. Today, and when the canal was in operation. This picture shows how busy Lock 7 was. Notice all the shops near the lock where you could buy kerosene or hay, or even fresh bread. Sometimes whole families lived on the canal. Can you imagine living on a boat like this? A safety rope was sometimes tied to children who were not able to swim. But most often, a canal boat held just the captain. Lock 7 West is at Breadlock Park. This park features a museum with a model of a working lock. As well as other canal artifacts. Breadlock Park is a lovely place to spend a day. Perhaps with a picnic, posing by the mules, or climbing on the canal boat, and pretend that you are traveling the Moores Canal with your family. Not far from Breadlock Park are some Moores Canal Plains. Let's take a look. The Morris Canal introduced a unique way to go up and down large hills. These were called planes and were basically small water-powered railroads. The canal boat would fit into a special car called a cable car. In this picture, a boat approaches the cable car. The cable car is half buried in the water in the center of the picture. The cable car had wheels and was set on top of rails and the car was attached to a strong cable. The cable would pull the car and the boat up or down the hill. At the top of the plane, the cable pulls the car and the boat back into the canal. The mules are reattached to the boat and the journey continues. Large underground water wheels, called turbines, would spin as water taken from the canal rushed through them. This spinning motion was connected to the cables and provided the power needed to pull the cable car and the boats.
This is an actual turbine on display at Hopakong State Park. In these diagrams, you can see how water is forced down the penstock and through the turbine, making the turbine spin. The turbine spins with enough power to carry the 70-ton boat up the hill. The cable cars at Plane 10 carry more than just canal boats in this picture. Two ladies in their Sunday best enjoy a ride up the hill. Today you can still visit this site at the Morris Canal Park at the edge of Phillipsburg. Notice the stones set on top of each other to support the plane. and the large stones used to hold the rails for the cable car. If you stand in just the right spot, you can imagine two ladies enjoying a Sunday ride. We will now head north along the canal, past Port Murray and towards Hackettstown. At Towpath Road in Port Murray, you can still see the general store that stood right alongside the canal. These are pictures of the canal in this area from years ago. Farms along the canal path were very common then and still are today. The Morris Canal mostly carried coal from Pennsylvania to the factories in northern New Jersey and to heat homes and businesses in Newark and Jersey City. The canal also carried produce from the farms in the west to the large cities in the east. The Morris Canal was built in the 1820s. The canal was very popular and traffic increased quickly. It was busiest around the time of the Civil War in the 1860s. However, just a few years later, railroads became very popular, especially for transporting coal. Railroads are faster and more reliable than canals, and they don't have to close in the wintertime. To try to compete, the canal was expanded and wide to handle bigger boats and more traffic. It didn't work, and the canal traffic dropped off very quickly. Finally, by the 1900, there was almost no commercial traffic on the canal. The few boats on the canal were mostly loaded with tourists or someone out for a weekend boat ride. For many years, skating on the canal was a popular winter activity. A canal would use an aqueduct to carry the canal over a stream or valley. This aqueduct, in the east, carried the Morris Canal over the Passaic River. By the early 1900s, the canal was barely used and had become a hazard. In 1924, after 100 years of service, the state of New Jersey decided that the canal was too dangerous and expensive to maintain. So they abandoned the canal. To do this job, they hired the same man who organized the canal expansion in 1850. He directed the men as they drained the water from the canal and filled in the canal path with dirt and rubble. They also tore down the plains and aqueducts and filled in the locks. When the Passaic River aqueduct was blown up in the 1920s, the workers felt very sorry for destroying something so beautiful.
The canal ends in Jersey City on the Hudson River, not far from Ellis Island. This basin, the easternmost part of the Morris Canal, today forms the north border of Liberty State Park. By 1926, the canal was gone. Only the occasional Morris Canal marker shows where the canal used to be. But there are still pieces left from the canal if you know where to look. This was Lock 1 West, near Lake Muskinekong in Stanhope. Today, you can still see the top of the lock walls if you stand in the same spot to take a picture. There is much to see of the old canal at Breadlock Park. If you know where to look. You can walk in the canal prism and imagine what it would be like to float along on the Morris Canal.